Hey friends, Pastor Bud of Chapman Keep the Promise Ministries. Hope you guys are having a great week in the Lord. It's Wednesday night and we are ready to share from God's Word. We're going to be talking about passion today. And while uh, folks are still coming in, I'm going to go ahead and pray for us and we'll see what God's got for us tonight. Good to see everybody coming on in. That's awesome. Uh, Father God, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for each one that will be listening now and even later, Lord. And I ask you to take this message and grow it in our hearts. And Father, help us to just tune our hearts to your will. In Jesus' name. Well, while folks are coming in, I got to thinking today. I did a did a little walking around, a little praying today. And the Lord really just put this on my heart. Passion. I don't have any notes tonight. I don't have any long drawn out thing that we're going to do tonight other than just speak from the heart. And so with that being said, I, I just want to ask you guys a question. What is it that you are passionate about? And I thought about over my life, that's, that's changed a little bit from time to time. I know growing up, I was very passionate about music. I still love music. I love playing the guitar. And I think about when I started playing guitar when I was about 14 years old, there was uh, some folks that had a band around the corner. And those guys were a lot older than me, man, and I just would love to hear them practice. I'd ride my bicycle out there, and I would just listen, just listen, and just listen. And finally, one day, they came out and said, man, do you, do you got a guitar? And I go, yeah, I, I can't even tune it, man. And he said, bring the guitar over. We're going to tune it. And so he tuned it all up, and he said, learn some chords and come back. And then, man, I thought, oh, my goodness, this is just this is just too cool. So I went home and I got a book and I started learning some chords and learning some chords and going back. And every chance I could go, go over there for them to show me songs, man, I was passionate about it. I wanted to know everything about it. And from that time on, I would just, just every chance I could get, man, I would do my homework and run over there and learn more songs and stuff. And, and, and through that, God was still building things in my life. I, I had no idea that he was going to use it later on in ministry. Ministry was not on my mind at the time. It was playing guitar. And I, I used to think my mom used to say, buddy, you would be a genius if you studied as much as you played the guitar. I would play the guitar before I went to school. I would go to bed at night with the guitar on me. My mom would take the guitar off of me and say, look, you got to go to bed. That's enough about me and the guitar. But that was something that I was passionate about. What is it that God's put on your heart? What are you passionate about? Well, I want to read you a scripture, and I'm going to show you a few things that Jesus himself is passionate about. This is John 17, 3, and, and Jesus is speaking here, and he says, Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. The Lord is passionate about you knowing the Father. He's passionate about you having eternal life, and the only way we have eternal life is through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, there's a lot of things that we can uh, invest in, but nothing outside of what God has for us has any eternal dividends. And I know this, at the end of, the, at, at the end of the, my life, I pray when we look back over there that I did not squander my days, not impacting lives for something that would make an eternal difference. And so, you know, I see that. I see Frank put on their art. You're right, man. You know, I got a buddy of mine that I work with. He's very gifted in art. I got a buddy of mine that uh, uh, saw at supper time tonight, Scott. Man, he is very gifted in, in building boats. I think about a young man, 13 years old at our church, Nicholas. He loves cars and he knows everything about it. He could tell you what year and what mufflers and, and what carburetors and stuff. And so what I'm saying is when you have a passion for something, you will know about it. You'll be excited about it. I heard a guy say, and you guys probably have heard this saying before, if you, if you find something that you're passionate about, you'll never work a day in your life. You know, if it's art, if it's singing, if it's playing guitar, if it's, if it's working hard with your hands, man, maybe it's reading, maybe it's whatever it is. But God has placed something in you that draws, you, draws the best out of you. You know what I mean? And I, I look at that and I say, so how am I using my passion to impact things for the kingdom of God? Well, you know what? I had no idea how God was going to use me being a front man in a band and different things like that. I'm going to tell you, I've, I've shared this different times at church, and people kind of say, no, I don't believe it. But look, the people that grew up with me know that. When I, when I, From the time I started school to the time I graduated high school, I had a problem with getting up early in the morning, and I was always very shy, man. I would just, oh, I'd almost get sick every day before school, man. And it's just like, oh, my gosh, what's going on? So to think about standing up in front of people and playing music or or speaking, man, was just unbelievable. You, you're thinking, I just can't, I can't even think about that. But God took the thing that I was passionate about, and he grew that in my heart. And then he's so patient and so full of grace, he drew that over. And the first thing I started doing in ministry was leading in worship. 
and I call it I call it my crowbar. I call my guitar the crowbar. I could say it before I start preaching. I'd always I always have my guitar because I always said, well, that's my safety net. If I don't know what to say, I could just grab my guitar. And then God slowly moved that out of my hand. And he gave me something much better. He gave me the word of God that will always stand the test of time. But, you know, God is so patient with us. And he places so many gifts and great things in, in our life. And we can use them to further the kingdom. Man, I, I think about different things. I see people in the ministry that, that do things with me. They're gifted in all types of stuff. You know, you say, well, man, I'm not called to be a preacher or a singer. That's great. You might be a businessman that God uses to impact lives all around the world by how you're using your finances. You might be somebody that's very good with uh, technology and God's using you to, to pass these messages on. So really the message tonight is, what is it that you're passionate about? What has God placed in your heart? And how is God wooing you to himself to use that to further the kingdom? I pray that as you think about this message and you spend some time praying about it, ask God, Lord, how can I use the gift that you've placed in me? to be a difference maker? How can I use the gift to, to further the kingdom? You know, I, I know people say, well, you know, I, I don't like crowds. I don't like this. I don't like, but I can cook or I can pray or I can, I can visit with somebody when they're sick. Man, let me tell you, never underestimate the power of your gift. So fuel that with faith, fuel that with passion and let God be glorified, whatever you do. God has gifted each one of us special for a time such as this. It's a unique thing. I say this a lot of time where God masterpiece. He says that in Ephesians 2.10. What is it that God's placed in your hand and in your heart that can make a difference, that can draw somebody closer to him? Everybody can be used to further the kingdom. Now, we're talking about furthering the kingdom, and I want to share about this weekend. We're talking about Resurrection Weekend, man. That's a powerful time. I know that we celebrate it once a year, but we should be celebrating it every day because we serve a risen, living Savior. Amen. But this week, I want to invite everybody out to Nine Cedar Road at 7 a.m. We're partnering with our friends from the Christian Motorcycle Association. We do this every year, and it's going to be outside. We're going to do a sunrise service, and they got a skit that they put together. Man, you do not want to miss this. It's going to be powerful. Powerful. It's going to be life-changing because it's going to be preaching the Word of God. Then I want to invite everybody to walk right across the street back over to our home church. And that regular service is going to be at 10 o'clock as always. Man, bring a friend. Come on out. We've got a message that is, is, is timeless. It never changes. It's powerful. It's the gospel message. But I'm going to tell you what. God has, has equipped us with so many different folks and so many different ways to share that message that you just might be surprised how it touches your life. It's, it's life-changing, and I tell you what, it can change your destination because our destination without Christ is that on the track of hell. But with Christ, it is, it is guaranteed in heaven. So going back to your passion, I pray that you know what, as you listen to this message, Lord, show me, ask God to show you how to use the gifts that he's given you to be a difference maker, to be somebody that God can say, hey, I can use that person. Hey, man, I can use that person. You know what? I've always been a talker. I had no idea that God would use my big mouth and proclaim the good news. I'm thankful that he does. I'm learning all the time. I'm listening all the time. And I'm grateful all the time for the opportunities that God gives us. And so, friends, I just want to invite you again out to come on out this weekend. Man, celebrate what God has done. We have a risen Savior in Jesus Christ. And I want you to know that God says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So you guys get a chance. Think about what your passion is. I see some more friends coming in. Yes, yeah, Scott, I was talking about you tonight. It was all good. I see my neighbor, Miss Pam. I hope you guys are enjoying these messages. Be encouraged in the Lord. Let me tell you, God is always uh, willing to use you. Here's the question. Are you willing to be used? We love you. You guys have a great night. Praying for you each and every day that God will further this message in your life and around the world so we can be difference makers for Christ and the kingdom. Check out our website at keepthepromise.org. We'll see you soon. Hope to see you this weekend. We love you guys. Bye-bye.